Good morning. Good early afternoon, yes. Andrew Robston joins us from Stack Overflow, where he works on the jobs team. He's here to speak to us about software estimation. Please join me in welcoming Andrew. Thank you. Um, hopefully you can hear the lapel mic. Uh, I am wearing possibly the worst possible shirt for this, I'm told. So a um, few things. We're going to talk, talk about uh, software estimation. Uh, like you said, I'm Andrew Robston. I work on the jobs team at Stack Overflow, which means I work on our job board. If you did not know Stack Overflow had job board, now you do. Uh, Stackoverflow.com slash jobs. Uh, also, uh, my employer likes me to tell you when we're hiring, and we are. We actually have one dev opening, a couple designer openings. So if that uh, kind of thing interests you, uh, people work from wherever, you know, talk to me afterwards. If you want to know more, we can grab some pizza. It's uh, close by. So um, back, uh, you know, 1935, uh, Einstein went to Princeton. This might be apocryphal. I haven't verified it myself. Uh, he was asked what he would require for his study. He replied, a desk, some pads of paper, and a large wastebasket to hold all of my mistakes. The more things change, the more I stay the same, right? Uh, we can just throw things away with a click of the mouse or whatever today. But uh, one thing that's also a little different is, we, is our employers and stakeholders tend to want our software and our results a little faster than we want to produce them or we can. And so that's what I'm here to talk with you about today. A um, little bit of uh, info about me, I already talked about myself, but you know, Twitter, website, et cetera, you know the drill. Um, so I'm not a genius on estimation by any uh, means at all. Uh, there's basically two main sources I've got my information. Uh, they're both about a decade old. I find them just as relevant today as I would have 10 years ago. Uh, so I've got these on the board for you or on the uh, projector. One's a book you know, the things with paper. Okay, there's a Kindle edition of this one now, I think, as well. Uh, software estimation and mystifying the black art. Uh, the other is a post by uh, the CEO of Stack Overflow now. Uh, he wasn't when he wrote it because it didn't exist yet. Uh, but it's called uh, evidence-based scheduling. And uh, there's a couple of approaches here that I tend to use when estimating my task lists, and I'll be showing those to you today. So what's an estimate? We think we know, right? We think we know that an estimate is something we tell people when something's going to be done. Um, okay, well, I'm going to have it done by Friday. It's going to take me 24 hours of time to do that. What's that mean? Do you really know it's going to take you 24 hours, not 23 and a half, 24 and a half? No, you don't, probably. Unless you do, in which case you're in the wrong talk, and I probably have nothing to offer you, so sorry. <laughs> uh, but if you, if you know exactly how long it's going to take, well, you can know when you're done if you kept track. That's when you know exactly. But that's not very helpful, is it? We can't tell them. And the other thing we can't tell our stakeholders, well, it'll be done when it's done. True, not helpful. Okay. Uh, we don't quite get away with that, uh, and uh, I'm sure you know all of you have these struggles. Well, whether you're working for a client, or whether you're working for a straight-up employer on internal software, um, I'm sure that you run into this where you need to tell someone how long something's going to take. It's not like we're building a building or a road where. Uh, if you've done it before, you're going to do the exact same thing again. You probably have a really solid idea of how long it's going to take. We've built software before, but we have, haven't built this software before because if we had, we would just reuse it. We wouldn't do it again. Uh, so that's why uh, estimation gets a little tricky and why uh, some folks have a little trouble understanding that uh, when we're talking to them as developers. So I have a little exercise for you. You're going to want your electronic version of something to write on or, heck, paper if that works for you. Uh, so a little exercise. I want you to tell me, uh, I'm going to put 10 things up here that are facts, no Googling, no cheating, okay? And I'm going to want answers to these 10 questions. And I want you to be 90% sure, because um, instead of, uh, I'll back up a second, instead of telling me what the answer is, I want you to give me a range a low to a high. These are all things that have numbers behind them. And you're probably going to have absolutely no idea what the answers are to some of these, and that's OK. But what I want you to do is be 90% sure that between your low and your high is the answer. OK? So, and if you've already read McConnell's book, sorry, I stole it from him. Okay. 
So I'll give you just a moment uh, while I talk to do these, th uh, to uh, look at this and just write down for yourself. Um, the, there's no medal for getting these right. I'm sorry, I you know, didn't have the budget. Uh, but uh, there's a few things here to uh, estimate. Surface temperature of the sun, I'm sure that's an everyday fact that we all know. Uh, latitude, Shanghai, et cetera. You might know some of these. Okay, but just uh, go ahead, write down for yourself what's the low, what's the high, and be just 90% sure that you got it covered. Okay, I will give you just a moment to do that. So uh, while you're writing uh, or typing or staring blankly at the screen because you don't want to do either of those things, and this is mini bar, so you get to decide that. Uh, it's my first mini bar, by the way, but I'm loving it. Uh, don't know why I didn't come to it before. Uh, so when we're telling our uh, clients, telling our employers what exactly it is that we uh, you know, when it is we're going to have this done, there's an idea that we want to have a certain amount of confidence, right? And when I say confidence, when we say, I'm telling you, I'm 90% sure that this number is between this and this, uh, we can do the same thing with our estimates. We can say that, you know, instead of saying, I'm 100% sure it's going to be done by X, which we'd like to know, but realistically, we just don't know that. Uh, I can say, I'm 90% sure that uh, I'm going to be done by X, or that it's going to take between this and this amount of time, uh, or it's going to cost this between this and this amount of money. Uh, we can at least give some feedback to our stakeholders that way, and then they will hopefully like us a little bit better, at least if we are able to deliver within that time frame. Uh, so, okay, I think I've given you about enough time, um, and if not, just pretend, because I'm going to give you the answers now. Okay, so answers, okay, and I tried to use a couple different units. Um, and just tally up, we'll score out of 10 how many you got right or how many were within that range. You know, so how many of you got at least one right? Okay, like all of you pretty much, right? Okay, how about five? Not so many, okay? So three? We'll just go down about three, okay. Now here's the thing, I asked you to be 90% sure, which means you should have gotten nine of them correct. Okay, why didn't you get nine of them correct? Little psychological trick, why didn't you get nine of them? You wanted to be correct. Right, yeah, okay, he's used the word accurate, okay. I'm going to use two words here, I'm going to use the word accuracy and I'm going to use the word precision, and I'm going to mean them in very specific ways. Accuracy is being right, okay? Precision is being narrow for our purposes here. Okay, so I, I, I'm going to be honest, I procrastinate a little bit and ran out of time, otherwise I'd give you a nice little visual that says that uh, we have a target. Think of someone shooting arrows at a target. Uh, a precise shooter would group those arrows all in one spot, not necessarily the center, but they would be all kind of in one spot. An accurate shooter would be kind of spread all over the place, but it's right around the center of the target. Of course, you want both precision and accuracy when you can get it, okay? So let's first make the distinction between accuracy and precision. Because what we need in an estimate is to be accurate, meaning that we contain the right answer. We would like to be precise, but you know what? We can't. Can't do it, at least not early on. There's just no way of knowing in certain cases as software developers how long something's going to take, but we can come up with an estimate that gives us a range. Now, we've all got this psychological want to be right. We want to be close. We want to do a good job. We want to give the right estimate, that precise estimate. But what we should really be focusing on is the accuracy. It, it's going to be hard the first time you do this if you've never done it before. But go and tell your boss, tell your stakeholder, well, I think there's a 50% chance this is going to take me between 15 and 40 hours. I hope you know your boss, don't try this with a paying client the first time, please, <laughs> okay? Because they're just going to look at you and not like you anymore. Um, but at least figure out how it would feel to say that. 
and then get used to it because that's what you're going to be doing from now on. You're just going to have to put it in a little bit more of a diplomatic fashion than I just did. Okay, so I want to walk you through a little bit how this works. Now, I'm not talking today about requirements per se. I'm going to assume for the purposes of this talk that you know how to get requirements or user stories or whatever it is you used in your software process, that you know how to get those, you know how to take some piece of that, we'll call it an iteration if you like, there's other terms, and that you know how to break down exactly what the tasks are that need to be done. Now, that in itself is a bad assumption, it's problematic, but I will get to that in a second. Um, and it's not because you're bad at your jobs, okay? You're good at your jobs, I'm just going to assume, because you're here and you're interested. Um, so we're going to use a little bit of math to help us out, okay? And you can read more about this in the two resources I gave you. Um, what I will do is exit this and go to a spreadsheet and hope that my network likes me well enough. So far, it's not complaining. Um, you know, we use Google Docs at uh, you know, Stack Overflow. All you can do, um, yeah, I know it has an offline mode. I'm not using it, living dangerously today. Uh, so. Here I have a sample task list of something I actually did for Stack Overflow. Um, I don't remember how long it took to do these things and there were some problems which I will talk to you about as we go. Uh, but I have these columns, single, low, and high. Ignore low and high for a second. What I want to do now is take each of these tasks because we've taken a task and we might have said or maybe you're used to saying beforehand, well, I think it's going to take me 10 hours to do this. Uh, task or not individual tasks, but like a whole project or a whole iteration or something of that nature. And I'm going to take 10 hours to do this, or I'm going to take 20 hours, or it's going to take me a whole week. Maybe you're used to saying that. Well, you'll probably find when you break it down, and by break it down, I mean you need to go look at the code, as, assuming you're building onto an existing code base. Let's go look at the code that you are uh, going to modify to implement the feature or features that are part of this iteration and figure out what kinds of things you need to change. Now this process is going to take you a little while. If you're not used to doing it, it's going to take you longer than you want it to. So it is going to take you know, some time to get through. You can even do this part of the estimate. But I'm going to assume for now that we have this done and that this is a pretty good list of what I need to do to uh, implement this feature. So when I have single, uh, this is from the McConnell book. I am going to come up with a single point estimate for each of these tasks that I think I am 50% likely to hit. Now, you remember how we did not so well at the whole 90% thing just a little bit ago? Uh, this takes some practice. Um, and you are really just making an educated guess and getting better over time at this point. We're going to use some math to help uh, turn your guesses into a real estimate, but for now we are really just guessing based on our experience. So I need to replace the current sidebar on the jobs page. Uh, this is a project I literally uh, did. Um, if you hate it, I'm sorry. Uh, so uh, I, I actually have some things I don't like about it and we're probably going to redo a little bit of, of it. Uh, but uh, replace the current sidebar behind a feature flag. We use feature flags, okay, with the new sidebar design. Our designers came up with a design for this sidebar that has like uh, recent jobs and your favorite jobs and uh, link to edit your match preferences on Stack Overflow jobs. And so it was my job to implement this design. Uh, and so how, you know, these tasks only have to be meaningful to me, okay? I'm the one doing it. And by the way, no one else can estimate your task list. You have to do it yourself. Okay? Some, one person's estimate, another person's estimate is going to be possibly totally different. You've got to be the one to do this. No, no one can do it for you. Uh, I'm sorry. So, uh, I'll try, but I can't. So, um, Replace the current sidebar. I'm going to say because eh, if there's some CSS involved, I've taken a look at it. Uh, this is going to be, there's a few elements that are going to be a little bit of a pain, but I think this is going to take me three hours at 50% confidence. In other words, I am a coin flip. I may or may not hit this, but as I go down the list, I should hit 50% of these. Um, make the recent search query text truncated. Okay, there's these recent searches we, you know, put on there, uh, you know, what you searched for, the last four things, and I'm supposed to make it look a certain way with an ellipsis. 
over two lines, which turns out to be next to impossible, but we'll, we'll um, you, you need clamp JS or something to do it. But um, because I know this is going to be a royal pain, I'm going to put three hours for this to expand collapse. That's not hard. We're using jQuery, right? We can, you know, just do a little toggle. I'm going to go one hour on that. Um, and, and I like to use hours uh, for this part of the task list, not story points, because those aren't meaningful to telling you when something's going to be done uh, from an individual task. If you use story points for your bigger uh, estimation, that's a fine way to do it. Uh, but that's not what I'm doing here. Here I really am trying to estimate hours. Um, now, add persistence logic. Basically, you know, we want to keep, you know, we want to make the state sticky whether you've expanded or contracted these panels. That's pretty easy. I don't usually go below a half hour, even if it's something completely stupid. Uh, this going to take me two minutes, okay? Um, because we just don't need to be that precise at this point. Um, also, it gives me a nice freebie because something else is going to take longer than I want it to. Okay, you know, add a feature flag takes me two minutes when Visual Studio doesn't crash. When it does, it takes me well longer. Um, it never crashes though, so we're all right. Uh, so you've never had that happen. Um, okay, so insert. You know, basically this is a testing thing. I, so I'm just going to go through and I'm going to put some numbers in. Uh, this is mostly a testing thing. Um, View all link to the page. Okay. And like I say, I've done this before, so don't worry if you don't understand what the tasks are. That's not the important part of this. So, um, okay, make a link open a page. That sounds easy. It's not when the page it's opening lives in a completely different code base, uh, the actual Stack Overflow code base, not Jobs code base, which are unfortunately separate. Um, we would like them not to be, but that would be a very big project. Um, um, Prism is a tracking thing we use for like statistics and whatever, so um, that's actually really easy, also easy. Uh, I'm going to put some time in for testing via the user interface. Um, make sure that you include this, okay? You, you need to do it one way or another. Either include it as part of your tasks themselves that you're testing each one, or give yourself some time to go through and make sure everything works before you hand it off to QA, if you have QA. Um, we are embarrassed to say we actually don't formally have QA at Stack Overflow because we let you do it for us. <laughs> I wish I was joking. Um, that's, that's, not, that's not entirely true. Uh, it, it's a little bit true on the question and answer site because if you break something, you're going to have like 20 posts on Meta within five minutes telling you you broke it. Uh, not quite the case in jobs, so uh, we don't want to break things. And, and we do test. We have a product manager and the designers that are responsible for testing. And we're starting to do formal QA, but uh, it's just not been a thing uh, for a while. So anyway, I'm going to give myself a little time to test. I'll give myself, literally, give yourself longer than you want. Oh, yeah, we're going to try to connect. Well, whatever. Pretend I put a three here while we uh, mess with getting the internet back. And then, hey, how's it going? And then uh, previously unidentified tasks. OK, this one's a fun one. How many of you have ever done a task list and you forgot something on it? Like everybody, right? Okay, this is my buffer for that, okay? Uh, because we need something to charge tasks to. I'll probably try to do, um, you know, something like, uh, you know, 10 to 15 percent. Uh, you may find that you don't use it at all. Um, okay, this isn't going to come back right now. So. <laughs> I have an ugly version here. Okay, I filled in slightly different numbers, but that's okay. Uh, this is from, you know, another thing. This is an open office. I don't like it, but it doesn't require the network. So that's where we are. All right, so let's just say it doesn't matter what the actual numbers are. You want to be 50% sure you're hitting them. Why? Because then we get to use some math from McConnell's book to say, here is the likelihood that we're actually going to hit this number and, okay, it, when you do this, you don't want to just add up this column of numbers and say, oh, here's my estimate and I'm 50% sure I'm going to hit it. Please don't do that because everyone will cry. Uh, you probably will not hit this estimate when you're new. Okay, you might later. You should really be 50% likely to hit it, but in practice that doesn't happen, especially when you're new to this. So. Um, we're going to use a little bit of statistics uh, background here, but you, if you don't know anything about statistics or don't remember how to compute a standard deviation, don't worry about it because you're not going to use a real standard deviation anyway. What we're going to do is, over time, 
you want to find out how many of those tasks you actually hit. And you want to keep it as close to 50% as possible. But if you find you're only hitting them 30% of the time, uh, then you make adjustments. And I don't have the table up here, but there is a, uh, I have in my worksheet. And by the way, I will share this uh, on my website uh, when I get to it. Um, there's a couple of numbers I literally just pulled from McConnell's book. Uh, and they're basically, uh, this standard deviation factor, which comes from a table that's like if you hit your 50% estimate so many percent of the time, then you should, you know, you should use these numbers. So they're kind of magic numbers, but they end up being sort of a divisor for um, the standard deviation. So it's not a real standard deviation, even though I called it one. Okay, variance is standard deviation squared for our purposes. Uh, you know. Somebody with a you know, statistics background is probably getting very unhappy with me at the moment because I'm not using these terms right at all. But the, it's just what we need to do here. So what's going to happen is you're going to add up the variances, which are the squares of all these things, and take the square root of that. And you get a number that you're now going to add. You're going to multiply times something and add it to your sum of all those task lists. And now you have closer to an estimate. In this case, it's like 28.2415 hours. Please, please, please do not tell anyone this number. Why? Too precise. This is an estimate. Okay? You don't need to be this precise. People are going to think that you're doing some sort of magic that, oh, I know it's going to take me this long, and you don't want to give that impression. I'm probably going to say, well, this is going to take me about 30 hours. Okay? Um, and again, the math for uh, this other constant has to do with how certain we want to be. Because when I say 30 hours, I need to attach a percent confidence to that. And I'm attaching 90% to this. Why 90%? Because my employer asked me to. Uh, normally, I would use 75. Uh, because it's usually good enough for business. But uh, when I introduced this to the folks at Stack Overflow, um, yeah, it's probably six months ago now. Um, I've only been there about seven, seven and a half months. Uh, when I introduced this uh, idea and said, well, you know, we want to know when certain things are going to be done, uh, how certain do you want me to be about it? Because they're using some approaches I didn't necessarily favor. Um, and they said, well, you know, director of engineering said, well, we'd like you to be 90% sure. If you miss it one out of 10 times, we'll deal with it. So that's why 90%. Uh, and the number that I used, you got at McConnell. When I put this online, you can play with the spreadsheet and maybe make this make more sense because I know I'm glossing over a little quickly. Okay, that's one estimate. It's not the only one on the page. The other estimate I have has this low and high. Okay. Now, this is where we're going to use uh, that Joel Spolsky evidence-based scheduling. And if you're new to this, hide the single column. And we're going to do this low high like we did earlier, where we were trying to guess 90% of the time you want to be within this. In theory, you should be within this range as close to 100% of the time as you can. But um, I kind of say 90% is good enough because you don't want this to get so wide that it's meaningless. So for each of these tasks, just like you didn't know, you know Alexander the Great's birthday necessarily, unless you did because you're a history buff, good for you. I sure didn't. I've already forgotten it. 300-some uh, BC. Hey, look. I'm, I'm you know, 90% right, right? So, um, so you want to be 90% right with this low and high. Hide the single column. Why? Because when you're new to this, you're going to mess up and you're going to find out that sometimes your single point estimate isn't within your low to high estimate, unless you have a good memory and you remember what it was. Uh, that means you've done something wrong and you need to go back and reevaluate, okay? Because your single point estimate, 50% likely, should be within the low to high range, okay? So don't beat yourself up if it's not. Just figure out what you did, kind of what your thought process was. Probably go with the higher one, again, if you're new to this, okay? And now, evidence based scheduling uh, by Joel Spolsky requires us to do something we may not be able to do yet if you're new to this, and that's keep track of how well we did on the individual tasks. McConnell requires it for one reason, this requires it for another. The whole point of this evidence based scheduling is that you take how well you did in the past and basically 
um, what you're going to do is say I'm so likely to uh, get within this range and so therefore I know, you know, basically you're running a simulation a hundred times. It's a Monte Carlo thing. Okay. And so the reason, you, you know what, I am completely backwards. My, my apologies here. I, I have totally led you astray. Okay. Sorry. Um, let's back up to McConnell. Uh, low and high have to do with McConnell. They do not have to do with evidence-based scheduling. I forgot what I was talking about for a moment. Okay, this low and high computes the variance and the standard deviation for your McConnell thing. Um, when I put this online, I'll put some more uh, detailed instructions about it. Evidence-based scheduling, we actually ignore the low and the high. We just use a single point, and we want to know how often you hit it. Uh, not only how often you hit it, but how far off you were. So if I said this was going to take me three hours, and it only took me one hour, we need to know that. If it took me five hours, we need to know that. What you're going to do is you're going to put these uh, numbers into a chart, uh, and we have history and ratios. Now, people at Stack Overflow knew what estimate-based scheduling was, and I believe it's the director of software engineering again said that, well, you need a tool to do you know, this. You, we can't just do it. You have to have a tool. I said, I've done a spreadsheet before. He said, you can't do it in a spreadsheet. I said, watch me. And we, we do, okay? So I've kept this, uh, this single point thing. So at one point, I estimated a task to take half an hour, and it really took me 15 minutes. And so we've got these ratios. And what I've done is we've got this random tab that rolls the dice a bunch of times with my task list and determines the, you know, basically 100 simulations and puts them in order uh, from lowest to highest. And if I want to know uh, from estimate, from uh, evidence-based scheduling, what's the 90 percentile, uh, I can get that. Okay, and I have a little chart that uh, I put on here, which uh, I don't think shows up in this version. It shows up in the online version. But basically, it rolls the dice a bunch of times and gets you a number. Now, I've used two different methods of estimating. And I've come up with two different results. I came up with 28.24. Again, don't give that number out. I came up with 22.625 using evidence-based scheduling. Which one should you use? Just use the higher one and don't stress out about it. Okay? Uh, if you're going to find that you like one better than another, but as you keep track of your uh, performance on these estimates, you know, this will hopefully you'll get better at estimating and you'll find that the uh, evidence-based scheduling should converge a little closer on your single point estimates because you just got better at it, okay? So, I, like I said, I'll put this on my website. I haven't done it yet, but that's a um, little bit of a worksheet for you to do some of your task estimates. Let's find out if I can even do the rest of the presentation or if we just have to give up on the slides. Okay, present. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do it. That's okay. It knows well enough here. So, okay, so I've given you some math, and hopefully I did not put you all to sleep. Uh, but that was, that is literally something I do uh, when I estimate my task lists, and now I've shared it with you, and I'll share it again online. Um, politics around estimation, okay? Your stakeholders don't care about anything I just said. Uh, you probably don't care about, oh, okay, maybe you do, but. Uh, <laughs> A few people didn't because they laughed. I, you know, but it's mini bar. You're allowed to do that. Uh, so I, uh, you know, I've had to tell bosses. I've had to tell other stakeholders. You know, when I think something's going to be done, it's never been a comfortable conversation for me. If it is for you, that's fantastic, uh, because I feel like I'm always delivering bad news. Uh, I feel like I'm telling them, well. You know, I think there's a 90% likelihood that's going to take me this amount of time, and they look at me like I've just estimated the time to build the next space shuttle or get us to Mars or something. Okay, you know, and so sometimes you have to make decisions based on this because sometimes the right decision is not to do the project. That's why this has business values because sometimes you need to cut things, sometimes you need to uh, reestimate because, well, the client changed their mind when. You, they said it's going to take this long, so we need to cut this feature, or we need to do something simpler. Um, strangely enough, I don't think I've ever had anyone say that the time is too short and it needs to take longer. I don't know if you've ever had that. I, I certainly haven't. I don't think anybody, you know, I don't think that's a thing. So, you know, politics around that. Uh, I just 
you know, try to be as honest as I can and say, look, here are, you know, I think it's going to take about this long. I'm 90% confident that it's going to fall within this range, or I'm 50% confident that it's going to take between this amount of time and this amount of time. Based on the math I just did, I can tell the uh, stakeholder than that. Um, uh, unless they're really interested, I don't share the spreadsheet because, again, they don't care. They just want to know what's going to be done. And so, okay, maybe they like that and we can get to work. Maybe there's some modifications. But the thing is, you now you know ahead of time. Now, say you're in an agile shop that does Scrum and you're, you always ship like every two weeks in an iteration or something like that. Your approach changes just a little bit in that um, instead of the question being how many hours is it going to take me to do something, the question is what can I get done by blank. This still tells you that. Uh, it's just that you may have to vary your commitment a little bit. So maybe there's a hard deadline. Okay, maybe you are building something that has to launch on a certain date because there's a legal reason for it or some other event. Um, say you're building something that has to be up and running, like you know, you're building an election results page and it has to be up and running by election day or it's just not really worth anything, is it? Uh, you may make your feature decisions based on these estimates uh, when you get to this point. Okay, you may have to cut features. Uh, in order to make your estimate. But the thing is, people know this in the beginning. Because what happens when you're running late with a project? Late software projects get, tend to get later. Why? Has anyone ever been in a meeting where the topic of the meeting, or at least one topic was, well, gee, why is this late? And what are we going to do about it? Oh, I'm the only one? Oh, no, I'm not. OK. <laughs> These meetings take time. They're not a good use of time sometimes, but the people running them think they are because they, they need this information, right? They need to know when stuff's going to get done. Uh, but you don't have the information for them. And instead of working on your software, you're doing this. I've literally told clients before, and I don't like to do it, but um, I had a client that uh, I did a long-term gig for and before I was at uh, Stack Overflow, of course. And one morning, I got into the client's office and uh, this is one of the pro those projects that was late before I showed up, and then it didn't get any less late after I showed up, but it did get done. Uh, and one of the things that I uh, remember was I went in one morning, project manager, Sauce Miami Cubicle, oh, how's the progress on this? Uh, well, here's where we are. I gave kind of a SAS update. I'm, okay, fine. A minute later, the you know another executive comes by. What's the progress on this, et cetera? And I think after about the fourth person, I said, you know, uh, you know, here's the progress. But I've literally spent more time giving status updates than I have working on the software. Maybe I can get back to doing the software now. And the guy's like, okay, okay, I'll you know I'll leave you alone and let you do it. Uh, but those kinds of things that are using up your time. I hate to say waste time, but they use up your time. Uh, that's something you can avoid if you have all this information ahead of time and you get it out to the, uh, to the uh, right stakeholders at the right time. So, no, I don't want to turn on sticky keys. Why do you ask? Okay. <laughs> when things go awry, okay, just be, I've not given you a magic formula to make your estimation errors go away. I can help you to a point, but I haven't made them go away. Uh, so things are going to go awry. You're going to find out that uh, there's a missed requirement or the client needs a change or any one of the things that we normally deal with in software development. Uh, the biggest thing to remember is that you should re-estimate as you go. Um, if something took longer than expected, don't expect something later on to take less time than you expected. It just doesn't work like that. Okay. Um, it's like, oh, well, we're a week behind on this, but I'm sure we'll make it up later. No, you won't. <laughs> you just, uh, that's not how it works. I mean, when it, I'm not saying it can't happen, but you can't gamble on it, right? So re-estimate early. That may mean going back to your task list, and, and there's lots of ways to estimate. The task list thing I showed you is one I use a lot, but um, it's not the only way to do it, and it's not appropriate all the time uh, when you don't even have the requirements yet, for example, and you're doing more of a user story estimation, story points, that kind of thing. Uh, that task list thing I showed you isn't going to be helpful there. Uh, so um, you're probably you know, better at those sorts of estimates than I am, uh, so I'll leave that to you. But uh, you're going to re-estimate and keep your stakeholders informed so they don't have to have a meeting just to bug you. 
some of them will still insist on having a meeting just to bug you, have been there, done that, but hopefully this states their need for information um, and they will think you're good at communicating and that you're a good software developer and you're going to get stuff done for them. So um, really, uh, not a lot to, else there, just keep re-estimating uh, those two resources I showed you, which I'll put back up on the board again uh, here shortly are uh, super, super valuable. Uh, I certainly encourage everyone to you know, grab the book off Amazon and this. Uh, so anyway, you can find me on Twitter, email, online, but I, we've got some time for questions, um, preferably before you go to pizza because you know, we can talk later too, but yeah, back there. I don't know if you've heard this, but Fafa has built an independent base. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah, and when Joel Spolsky was there, he made sure it did. But yeah. I'm just surprised you guys don't use it. Um, yeah, we tend to, we literally use Trello for everything. We have a Fogs Bugs oh, wow. install and we don't use it. Um, we don't use it much. So, yeah, I don't know why not, but we tend to use Trello and put everything in there. So, yes. So, do you have experience with automating better your estimates? Mm hmm. Okay, well, there are two things I do. Uh, the first one is that catch-all task I threw at the end there of the task list is to cover some of that, but at the same time, that's not always adequate because if we really missed it, like we missed something big, um, you have to re-estimate and know that you may have to cut something else to make your ship date. Uh, that's just reality and wishing it to go away isn't going to help. Uh, so really, you know, you might be able to put in extra hours to make your ship date or something like that. By the way, never do that. Uh, uh, ne never count on it, okay, put it that way. Also, don't, um, another thing to do is don't estimate a 40-hour week. Don't see something that says 40 hours and say, I'm going to get that done in a week because you have other things to do. You have, you probably have meetings and you're going to have other things. So there's a little bit of cushion you can build in there. Um, you might get sick or go on vacation or something like that. Do we get vacations? Anyway, um, but, but yeah, basically um, there's not a great answer for that because it's literally going to be different every single time, right? So I bake that in uh, to the catch-all uh, task at the end, like I said, and as soon as you find out there's a problem or something that's going to affect that date, re-estimate so that we can get everyone on the same page because uh, one thing I've had happen is someone puts a new requirement and I say, okay, that's great, but it's going to take this long, it's going to delay our completion by this much, and the response I get is, you know what, we didn't really need that extra thing anyway. So for your, your catch-all, is it a set percentage of the total size of the project, or how do you do it? That's what I do usually, is I'll usually, um, I'll usually put a single point at something like 15% of the hours that are above it with a range of zero, because there could be, literally be nothing to something ridiculously high. Um, so, so that I'm within the 90% on that most of the time. That's kind of what I do. Um, your mileage may vary on that. That's not something I got out of any of the books. I just started doing it because I, you know, I found that I miss tasks sometimes. It happens. So, yes, back. Um, I can if it will decide to be online and let me. Or I can just do this. Yes, I'm sorry. I will. I'll do the best I can to get us back online so that I can blow that up for you. Oh, hey, we have internet, allegedly. Why didn't we stay connected to it? Okay. I will work on doing that, uh, making it bigger here while we, uh, hey, present. There we go. Bigger. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, I have been using some form of this for years, um, and I'll tell you a little story. Uh, my first uh, full-time gig, I worked for a division of U.S. Bank. It uh, doesn't exist anymore. It's called FAF Advisors. It's a brokerage arm. And one of the reasons I got so interested in this topic is I I'm not trained as a software developer. My degrees are all in music, okay? Uh, incidentally, but I have, you know, I'm kind of a self-taught programmer and I was able to get a job in it and, you know, and I had this project come up as a, you know, kind of a junior level developer and I basically just 
kind of haphazardly asked, uh, I didn't know I could take time to make an estimate. I thought if someone asked me how long it would take, I had to give an answer right then. And I did. Um, and I was very, very, very wrong. Okay. And I kind of got in trouble for it. And I realized I needed to do something about it. And so I came up with this uh, estimate system then. That, this was probably 2009-ish. Um, so I've been using some version of it ever since then. How much has it helped my estimates? Is immeasurable. Well, not immeasurably. You could measure it. I just haven't bothered. <laughs> um, you know, so uh, you, you, the whole point is measuring it, right? Uh, so how much has it helped? I, when I say that I'm 90% sure something will be done by X, I probably hit it 90% of the time. Uh, but it's taken a few years to get to that point. Um, when I was doing 75% at every employer before this, uh, it, you know, I probably didn't hit 75% of the time. I probably hit about half the time. Uh, so, good. Yes? What's uh, your most common factors that derail your uh, expert uh, predictions? Uh, missed requirements are the biggest one. Uh, an another thing to watch out for is anytime there's a learning curve like I need to use this library and I've never used it before. Big giant warning sign, okay? That library may be the most user friendly thing in the world and you're going to feel like an idiot for estimating it. It was going to take you 16 hours to learn a tool that you read the docs and you learned in five minutes. But um, the other way is not pleasant. Uh, so that's another thing is if you have to work in a new technology, uh, be sure you budget time for that because you're going to need to learn. It's like, yeah, I know so-and-so could do this project faster because they already know the tool, they already know the code base. Um, I don't, and I've got to get up to speed. And fortunately, I work somewhere that's okay with that, and if, you know, but it's just reality. So those are the main things, uh, miss stuff and got to learn stuff. Um, let's just pick here. Yes? Um, so you're saying you can't estimate someone else. But right. Sure. Um, the question was, how do we estimate for someone else because we have to? Well, um, it's a different kind of estimate, right? The one I showed you for the task list, the developer needs to do it themselves. There's just no substitute because you're the only one who's going to be doing it. You know yourself. But other types of estimation like uh, the whole project, for example, or a bigger, you know, something bigger, um, yeah, you're going to have to use some estimate expert judgment for that that might be a bunch of people sitting around in a meeting deciding about how long something's going to take. But by analogy, for example, so you say, well, this feature took us five weeks to implement. This looks like it's about the same size, so let's budget five weeks for this or five or six weeks for this. Um, the two aren't really in conflict. It's just a different stage of the process. Uh, you're doing this higher level estimation early with a, kind of a group. But once it gets down to the point where you have enough requirements and you have enough of an idea of what's going on that it's time for the task list, you've got to do it yourself. Um, it's just a waste of time to have someone else try to do it for you. So uh, I'm losing track of order here. I think you were next. Uh, how far out are you in the project you project every day? Is that like a month or a year? Or? Well, certainly not a year. Um, one of the other things you need to make sure you're doing when you get to the task-based estimation is the tasks need to be small enough. Um, otherwise, you need to break it down farther. And by small enough, uh, Joel would say no more than 16 hours a piece. I think that's a little high, personally. I try If it's above about eight, I usually want to break it down more. Um, so I'm usually doing one iteration at a time uh, because by the time the next iteration comes around, priorities might have changed and you're off doing something different anyway. Uh, so. Uh, I've never been expected to estimate a task list a year out. That's just lunacy. I, I would just say, you got to be kidding me. But a couple months is not impossible if it's a bigger feature, something like that. So uh, I think there was a question up there, up there. Yeah. So a while ago, I worked in an agile shop. And we would have these intense meetings where we talked about the new features we were developing. We would divide up the steps. In the, in the meeting and talk about how we thought we were going to do it so we could put estimates on each one. But then when we go to develop it, you find we, we found, I found more often than not, we couldn't do it the way we had outlined all of these little steps. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, the typical thing that would, might happen is like, oh, we have to get this piece of information in this part of the code. I'm nowhere near a database example. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't think about 
sliding down the steps that you mm -hmm. thought you were going to. It mm -hmm. never turns out to do the steps you thought you were going to. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder how you deal with it. Is that your sure. experience? How you sure. Uh, first off, is that my experience? Yeah. Okay, I think it's probably a lot of our experiences. Um, it's important to remember an estimate is an estimate, right? If the only way you can know for sure how long it's going to take is if you were done. Okay, and that's important to keep in mind because like you said, you're going to find something, right? So, and you can only spend, sometimes you have to time box the amount of time you spend on the estimate because you need to actually get some code done and eventually you have to kind of call it good enough. Uh, so you're going to invariably find, as you said, that there is something that you missed. Um, and that's why I include the catch-all task. But again, if you find that out and you find that there's a real problem and you've got to go back and estimate you know, while you're coding, that, that's why we re-estimate is because you have that happen. And you're just like, you know what, I totally missed this uh, thing. Um, actually, on that sidebar project, because um, it was my, kind of my first project at Stack Overflow, but first real project. They give you a little like graduation -y orientation one to do. Um, well, I missed like half the requirements because no one told me, uh, you know, I just knew that, oh, this, you know, the, basically there were a bunch of unstated requirements. And also I got into the code and found out, you know, I tried to code it one way and it didn't quite meet our standards because I didn't know what they were yet and said, oh, you're rendering everything client side, you should be doing server side here. Um, that kind of came up in code review. And so I actually ended up totally re-estimating and starting over halfway through is that, you know, what, this isn't going to work um, the way you want it done. We need to go back to the drawing board to requirements and start this again. And while no one was truly happy with it, they were happier with the result when we got done. Uh, so uh, there's no magic answer to your question, unfortunately, because you are going to miss that stuff unt until you do it. But you just do the best you can on the task list and then re-estimate when you need to. Um, time for uh, well, there's a couple minutes here. Yes. Um, what you advertise and what you know yourself can be different. So it is very possible that you don't want to advertise anything short of a half day or a full day. In fact, I do that too. Okay, uh, and when I say don't share 28 point whatever hours, that's what I mean is that you want to keep it higher level because it doesn't matter if you got it done in three or three and a half hours. You want, you're keeping this to kind of half days or whatever. If you know you've got discovery to do, um, or you know that, that that's something you're going to start building into your task list as you go. And you'll, when you start finding out that, well, I'm missing my 50% estimates, um, I'm missing those single point estimates, then you know, you'll, you'll start to build in time for that. Um, but yeah, it, to your point, no, you don't want to advertise the minute hour that you're going to get something done because it, it's not meaningful and it's probably wrong. So I hope that answers your question. If, does that kind of make sense? It, it probably takes me about the amount of time I spent actually doing it here. It's not, it, you have to do it sometime. You're either going to do it when you're writing the code or you're going to do it before y your task list. You, at some point you have to go in and do something, you know, because otherwise the software doesn't get written. So you may as well, you might have to estimate twice. You might have to do a higher level estimate like you said. Um, especially if you're in a shop that expects it. And then as you're going through the code for yourself, figure out if you're on target. You don't have to publicize that to your team or your stakeholders. You just do it for yourself so you get better at estimating and you're more confident later on in your estimates. So yeah, it's a very good point, very fair point that you don't want to be too granular with what you advertise. Um, one one o'clock, I'm happy to answer questions, but uh, <laughs> no, we had a question, but nope, you want pizza. So thank you so much. Appreciate it.